there. We are Claire and Nick Butcher, and we've been together for over 20 years. We used to live in Wiltshire in the UK, with Nick having a background in bathroom sales and myself in hospitality and catering. In 2020, we decided to leave the daily grind to start a new life in France. Eventually, we ended up buying this. It's not officially a chateau, even though the village locals call it one. However, it is just as large and equally as much hard work as a chateau. With a horde of original features and the building having been unoccupied for many years, we are slowly breathing life back into her, whilst frequently still finding the many treasures she holds. Join us on our journey with our dogs, Flora and Merlo, as we renovate our Maison de Maitre, one turret short of a chateau. So, in the outside toilet, we're going to have the bowel that is looking excellent now. Um, I'm going to cut the top, try and fit that in it. Wish me luck. So I drew round the outside of the basin, but there's quite a large rim. And so using the masking tape as the measuring device, I've drawn another circle inside. And that is the line, let's see if I remember to do it correctly, that I will follow with my jigsaw and have a go at cutting through the lid. <laughs> Just need to see what Claire makes of this. Stick your head in the hole and breathe in. That really doesn't make me want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Then, ooh. That smells like wine. Oh, cognac or? No, I, I think it's Merlot. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, mm. no, that's. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely from wine. You can tell from the colour. No, oh, I thought that's from where they set fire to it and blackened it. And Hang then. On. If you can see round here, it's all crystally and sedimenty and purple. So I don't think that's... I think that's been wine then. It's been wine, yeah. That's all right. It smells nice. It does, doesn't it? Hang on, let me try and pick some crispiness off. Dare you to eat it. Look, it's purple. Dare you to eat it. You really dare me to eat it. <laughs> don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no prize. Just... <laughs> <laughs> There's no prize. <laughs> it's like... It's like the flaky bits that come off your feet that land in our bed. <laughs> Okay, well, next job I need to get on with with the barrel is I'm going to screw the hoops through at fairly regular intervals around each of the hoops. Um, but at the moment, they are only just held on with these little things, which stops the hoops from rising up and therefore loosening. Um, but if any of the, um, the slats of wood shrink and fall out then the whole barrel could fall apart and we don't really want that when it's kind of in use as a basin um the other thing i need to do which i'm not going to do till i've done that is cut a hole to get all the waste pipe water out of it there is a little hole here the original hole where they filled it but um that's not suitable. I need to cut something I can actually get my hand inside. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Some drilling and screwing.
Good morning, and I'm just getting set up, ready to start the first job of the day, which is to get these floor tiles laid on the floor. Not the biggest of areas, so I might get so far and have to stop because I can't work anymore and trip over myself. Before I get going, um, I'm just going to cut a couple of them because I know that I need to stagger them lengthwise as they are um, plank-shaped tiles again. Thankfully, a lot smaller than the plank-shaped tiles that she chose for me to lay in the sheet. Um, so this shouldn't be too bad. I've done three rows. They're looking all right. Very happy with that. Um, getting a bit tight for space and I'm gonna let those ones dry before I then carry on in this direction. All right, so whilst I've got the floor tiles drying over there in the outside toilet, I'm gonna to carry on working on the barrel. Um, carry on putting these screws all the way around um, I'll count them up later and tell you quite how many there are but there's a lot There you have it with its 122 screws. That was hard work. Anyway, hopefully that will mean when I cut for the access to get the water pipes out, the whole thing won't fall apart now. So we'll give it a go. seem to go okay so next job tap hole so I found a, a nice shiny chrome basin waste and some pipe work that will enable this basin to sit in there whilst this pipe will be able to come out through the barrel and connect onto that pipe which I'm going to have coming out from the wall. I'm not going to set that in permanently yet or do anything more with that until we get in the uh, outside toilet and, and it's ready to plumb in. But looks wise, that is what we've got. Right, I'm still waiting for those tiles to dry um, before I, so that'll be tomorrow, uh, before I can then tile the other half of the room. Um, so I've got this pe this little bit that I've got the workbench in and I'm going to try and see if I can get just a couple just to make a start some of this up on the ceiling. I need to finish off with some trim along there, well along all the edges really. 
can't do the final strip against the wall till I've got the electric sorted out and out of the way. Um, but yeah, that went that went all right. Quite happy with that. carry on doing the ceilings to say until I've got the electric sorted out so um, as I've got the rest of the ceiling up what I thought I'd do is cut the holes in the ceiling for uh, the down lights that we're putting in which are just simple white down lights they are suitable for bathrooms um, so yeah they'll be fine in here just tested it to make sure my hole saw is the right diameter and that goes in fine so uh, had a little measure, I've got two of them ready to drill and then uh, move everything over and do the other side. equidistant from each other. I'm going to go and get some wire. See if I can get them joined together. Well, getting the wires from A to B, I need to go up there done enough today because take the dogs and the wife Claire out for a walk. <laughs> Cheeky sod! <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Have a go at this in the morning. I'm out here again. The last night I, I stopped, it just got too late, but this morning I'm going to carry on by initially getting that electric wire to come out of that hole and then I can connect it all in. I'm going to do that from above, just need to go up the ladder and then I'm up on top of the that little room. Whilst I'm up there I'm going to give it a spray of xylophene, which is that wood treatment, um, stop any sort of termite action for... 20, 30 years or so. There you go. Quick xylophene will help the wood for years. Well, I've pulled the wires through, connected them up to the switch and hey, it works. Um, I've left them, oh, that one doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> right, um, I've left them bit down from the ceiling so I can um, just give it a quick paint um, give it a first coat I don't know how many it will need
So, uh, well, I'm going to start at the dry side and uh, try and cut some tiles to fit in there. And there we have it. All the tiles are now laid on the floor. They're all still wet. Um, over there and down the edge here. Looking good though. So the good news today is, is that I am two coats down and the doors are fully dried. However, they are still a little bit patchy and could do with maybe one extra coat, possibly even two. But one of those classic moments, I've run out of paint. Until I have paint, one of the little things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort out the metal door surround on here. And the first thing I'm going to do is give it a light sanding because it's got all of these little sticky bits on. And now I've done that, I'm going in with the shiny black metal paint. Mm. While I'm doing this, I'm going to give you my opinion of Hammerite paint. Now, Hammerite is the brand and it's a metal paint. Um, I don't know whether you can get it in the country where you're watching or not. Um, Hammerite is like a really, really thick gloss. Um, if you're Hammeriting something, it's not one of those jobs that you want to start, go make a cup of tea and come back to because it's just so sticky um i think you can get it in matte but today i have gloss because i'm also using up some of the paint that we have um you know waste not want not and all that now it's kind of like painting painting something with marmite or vegemite is the consistency of it it's yeah really thick and gloopy um I don't think it's something that you would really want to use for doing really, really tiny detailed work, but it does have really, really good coverage. As I say, it's just really thick, really sticky. It takes quite a while to dry as well. Yeah, it's a bit like the Marmite of paints. You either love it or hate it. And by gloopy, I mean like, oil gloopy really thick oil um even though i've had the lid on this tin the top layer normally solidifies after you've used used it once and then you've got a cut <laughs> into the top crust to get through to the liquidy gooey center And there is another little job completed. Well, I now have more paint and it's time to give these one last coat. After my final coat yesterday evening, I can tell you, but not show you now, that the white gloss part of the doors is dried and they look cracking. They look whiter than white. However, they have now been moved and are stood up. 
And the reason why they are stood up is that I don't want to put the backside with gloss down onto the props because I've got this fear that the gloss will get damaged. So for the final part, I've stood them up. I've now finished painting the vents on the doors black and it's time now to go in with the grey paint. This is the grey paint that I've used for all of the shutters uh, and all of the doors on the Mace under Matra. So, hello darkness my old friend. Let's go. <laughs> One coat, one coat down. Right, just done a quick brico trip. Um, one of the ceiling lights wasn't working, so I needed to swap that over. Picked up a few bits and pieces, as, as you do. Um, so I've come back, the, the adhesive underneath the floor tiles that I've laid earlier today, it's still wet. Um, but I'm gonna try and get up there and do another coat of paint on the ceiling um, and actually <clears throat> just had clarification from Claire that that bit of wood there is also going to be white so I'll uh, put a coat on there too. Now we have two coats. Ta da! Over here, over the last couple of days, it's like somebody's just flicked a switch and gone poof. Autumn, autumn is here. And a lot of my plants are starting to die back. And I think I can safely say that this will be my last cucumber of the season. But what a length and what a girth. What a good cucumber plant I've had this year. Can't wait till next year. Now, where things are dying back, I'm going to give you the last little garden update of the year. And at the same time, I'm going to show you some of the other things that have been happening around the house that we don't really necessarily always get a chance to show you about or tell you about. Here goes. It's really funny because I've just come through into the in-between between the two houses this morning and I'm just about to go downstairs into the cellar for something. Now, I feel really sorry for Merlo. Merlo loves his squeaky toys. Nick doesn't love Merlo's squeaky toys and he keeps hiding them. Has Daddy hid your squeaky toys? Shall we give them back? Sharky. Who else have we got in here? I've got everyone in here. <laughs> oh my goodness! How many have you hidden? <laughs> Be free! I'm in the old hayloft which is above the sausage factory and above sort of the, the barn bit that I use as my tool shed. 
just thought I'd show you what I've seen up here. Have a look at this. Just having a nice little sleep up there. Two little bats. So the weather's getting colder, we've decided to have one last swim of the season. Just like a mermaid taking to the water. Merman, please. A merman. Thank you. Lovely. Well, here we go. Fish and chip lunch for everyone. Is it all right? Nice. Lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. I managed to get three coats on the doors. Um, I did want to try and get the stud work done, but I'm running out of time. However, we do have the door hardware. I'm now gonna hand this over to Nick because very shortly I need to get in the car and I'm leaving for England. Woo! And the last thing that I'm gonna try and do before I get in the car is film this week's wine of the week don't worry i'm only having a sip i'm not going mad <laughs> hi. hi and welcome to wine, wine of, of the week. week more wine this wine is uh two euro 71 cents and it is called roche maisette maisette uh, uh, sink basin uh, <laughs> merlot <laughs> wash Maze. Russia, I would Maze. Say. Merlot. Merlot. It's a 2022. It, cheap and cheerful. Very cheap and cheerful, but it, it works. It says it's round and fruity. Well done, dear. A bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good progress again this week. Moving on. Um, can be on leaps and bounds, I think you could say. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, be nice to get it all finished very, very soon. Yes, especially now the weather is turning cooler. It's gone autumnal. Autumnal. Mind you, still sitting outside in the t-shirt, so it's not that bad, no, is it? It could be a lot worse, couldn't it? Yeah, well, if you've enjoyed this week's episode, I hope you have. Please click the like button. And if you've not already done so, please consider subscribing. And then subscribe. <laughs> Don't it, just consider it, actually do it. It's free. <laughs> free. <laughs> it, exactly. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and X. Or at our website at www.theexpatbutchers.com Now enough of that. I'll do. I'm driving. Where? To England. Well, no, I'm driving to a boat. <laughs> and then, yeah. I'm not driving across <laughs> the water. I'm not a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers. Cheers, <laughs> and uh, see you next week. See you next week. What can you say? wine. It's red. It's drinkable. Doesn't go with toothpaste. <laughs> Don't tend to see that pairing, do you? <laughs> no. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs>